Beat me after slashing your wrist yeah. Or at the end if you so insist I'm persistent when told to cease and desist When it's blasphemous yeah. shit yeah. Hello, she left my paper. Bill Burham, black people. <laughs> so I'm expecting some fire. Thanks to Erbil Eric. It takes if you ever see any drugs. flop of me. It's nice to be back here down in the South, man. I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me. He's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming. And it's coming hard. Oh, yeah, it's not going to be pronounced with the A. It's going to be with the R. And he hit the R. He, like, stuck the landing. It was like a dismount. Clan members high-fiving in the background, like, doing the wave. Just out of nowhere. So now, immediately, I'm looking over my shoulder like, dude, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know what You're I mean? I'm waiting for like this hail of black fists to come raining down <laughs> on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of like a potential ass kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word, hot potato, just threw it in my lap. Like, hey. Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. <laughs> I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. I was just about to say that, not even feeling out no more. It's just like, fuck it. I, I'll just assume you don't like niggas either. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, you know, you don't just turn to a guy and say, oh, bitches are fucking annoying, man. Like, get in the fucking kitchen. You don't do that. You wouldn't do that. If you, even if you were the biggest misogynist, you still wouldn't do that. But yet, with race, it seems to be like, do you know what? What's the worst that's going to happen? <laughs> Zero respect, man. It's crazy. I love this guy. Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? <laughs> Have you ever fucked your sister? Right? <laughs> rattling off answers then you go old school you give me a pamphlet you tell me about your militia you don't just dive into it that dude was one of the angriest people i ever met i should have known that word was coming because he was just watching terrell right anytime i would bring up look at man that guy's talking trash he would just like flip out he won't shut up <laughs> you know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you the eyes are up. You just shut up and play the game. <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't even shut like Terrell, dribble. but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville is just losing his mind, like <laughs> kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> like, it's hard. It's hard having. It's hard having melanin and finding positives in racism, but I do find racism has the potential to be extremely funny in the rap. Like, if someone's put thought into it, I love when someone's actually, you know, that like, not just said, ah, oh, nigga, like, that's like, come on, come better than that. I don't even think you're racist. You're just, you haven't got a better vocabulary. Um, but when someone really puts it in the thought and comes up with something I've never heard of, I'm, I don't even, I wouldn't get offended. It would just be, you know what, my guy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, it's not it's not easy to find positives in racism. But what he just said there was definitely a positive, my guy. When Colin Kaepernick freaked out America, <laughs> Christ, don't do it, don't do it, knee down, <laughs> Jesus Christ. When he did that. And then all over social media, you see all these white people going insane. Tell me how racist this is. You go to a shop to buy a Nike. To t oh, sorry, if you're American, you'll say Nike. I suppose it is an American company, so I should say Nike too. I apologize, Nike. You go and buy some Nike. It just feels so weird saying it like that. Go and buy some Nike. 
take it home, cover it in <laughs> petroleum. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion, and uh, I gotta get rid of them, man. I gotta admit to you. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes, hanging out with them, because I gotta like fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on, all brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is you know, I basically I iron the shit, right? <laughs> I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. Ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like all black people scared me. And I was like the typical white dude from like the suburbs. You know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? My only frame of reference with black people was like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? Throw the fucking LA riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I watched the videos, so he's got nice cut. <laughs> that right there. That is it. That is it. I love his wordplay. Terrible PR. That's what I'm saying. Everything, like everything we do, is so annoying. Everything we do is a reflection upon all of us. That's how it is for the average person. The average person is not racist, but the average person hasn't got exposure, and their lives are too busy to think a little bit further than what they're showing. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't grudge them for that. So, if you're white. You're not from a black neighbourhood or you don't have many black people there. And all you know of black people, literally, this is England's problem. All you know of black people was the news. Like, we weren't on TV shows or anything like that. So, literally, the only representation we had was on the news. So, imagine you live in the countryside and you see two black dudes after you just heard about all these killings that's happening in London and all these stabbings and black people like to mug and black on black crime. Black on black crime. Do you get what I'm saying? So I completely understand it. It's, it's, it makes perfect sense. And, and then you see a rap video. <laughs> and it pretty much confirms it for you. Yeah, man. No. He's got all the women and he's still fucking mad. These black dudes are never happy. But after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. I figured out my head, because I know from hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go. The immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, oh shit. God. Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. I'm not saying something's going to happen. I'm just saying. I'm paying attention. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging anybody. I didn't know anything about lotion. Never yes. used it the first 33 years of my life. My God. I'm not judging you. My God. My God. Do you know the logic in that? <laughs> oh my god but right. being 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 young right um not being as well off well off as my counterparts and being mixed race i was even more of a minority growing up like you know back when jesus was crucified back in the day the only thing I felt in control of, two things, and one of them was making sure you always had a good haircut, which I never did as a child growing up. 
and we was at a time when afros weren't cool and I had a big afro. My surname is Benson. I don't know if you're British or not, but we have these cigarettes called Benson and Hedges. And I was Benson with a fucking head on. <laughs> if you wonder why I've got all this shit on my face, it's because of shit like that. Right? But anyway, as a young urbanite or whatever you want to call it, like it was a haircut and the only other thing was shoes. Like, you had to have Chris trainers. That's why people have been killed over trainers, like, because it's one of two things that you've got in your life, like. You'll see tramps, not literal tramps, but people, like you said, they ain't got shit, but they'll have Chris shoes. But then they'll get mad if you go anywhere near them because they can't afford to replace them quickly. Like, my dad, to be fair to my dad, I love him. He, he did always make sure I had banging trainers. That was the one thing I always had growing up. But... He made me wait a very long time between each pair. <laughs> Deservedly so. Deservedly so. I'm not knocking that. Like, exactly right. But it's just hard when everybody else around you is banging out trainers left and right. It's just... Oh. But I kept mine clean, though. I kept them clean, though. Except for one pair of Jordans. Oh, I was so upset. At these wicked Jordans. They recently come back out, but... I got them first time around, reflective tongue and all that. And um, I had them wicked, like eight months, spotless. And then one day I was around the flats, some flats that I don't even hang around. So it was my fault for being around there. But I was around some next flats and we would play WWF. And um, someone did a move on me. And then when I stood up, all the air bubble in the bottom of the sole was ripped off. My heart was broken. And then my dad saw it cast the shit out of me and nope, did not replace them for a good while. So yeah, if you see someone with mashup trainers, just stay alert. I'm not saying they will rob you, but just be alert. <laughs>